The Morgan Report with David Morgan. David Morgan with you with the weekly perspective for the week ending the 26th of January 2018. This week we're going to focus mostly on the cryptocurrency slash gold connection. First article up, however, has to do with bankruptcy. USA Today bankruptcy fallout. Toys R Us closing up to 182 stores. This continues even though the economy is getting better and in some areas it really is however a lot of retail is struggling and more and more bankruptcies are coming to the fore this one appears to be uh, a big slide down obviously moving over to the energy sector oilprice.com this article is the biggest year yet for u.s shale What's interesting about this article is that the shell industry has really never been profitable, even when oil was about $100 per barrel. As many have observed, shale drilling is a sign of energy desperation. It's not the first oil you're going to go after. If there were any profitable oil left in the U.S., the industry probably would have better things to drill for than shale oil. So the facts about going all out on this very marginal situation has become unprofitable always been unprofitable and yet there is a continued ongoing uh, amount of journalism that purports that this is really the savior that oil independence is here in the u.s etc etc when the facts actually are different whether or not there is a huge amount of oil in gull island uh, as purported by lindsey williams i do not know uh, so I will leave that up to you to determine. But again, it seems odd that we would go in, we, the United States, would go after shale when there is purportedly all this oil up in the Alaska frontier. But that remains to be determined. I'll stay open-minded. It's just something to keep in mind that this shale oil situation, if you really do the research, is not as lucrative as it is purported to be. Staying on the oil theme, this was from Reuters, and this one was rather interesting. I think some of us are well aware of it, but this was published recently, so I'll go over it. Basically, the drug cartels in Mexico are getting uh, are diversifying. Not only are they banding together for the drug situation, but they're also looking at uh, oil. And what they basically have done is steal oil going through pipelines in Mexico and uh, according to this article, it's sapping more than one billion in annual revenue from the state coffers by terrorizing workers and using strong arm, arm tactics to basically steal oil. And if you look further, what it determines is the fact that this is a level four area, which means it is like a war zone if you're going to go in there and try to clean this thing up. So basically, these uh, drug cartels are running amok, not only on the drug trade, but also stealing oil. And again, it is not a trifling amount, about $1 billion on an annual basis. Uh, I don't think too many people are aware of this. I travel to Mexico very frequently and, and am aware of it, but I thought I'd bring it to attention of everybody uh, this week. Next one up is from Egemonia. Why we're underestimating the American collapse. Great article. I would recommend you read the whole thing. And I am not. I'm just going to go through the, to the end, which is a summary, basically, of all of the precepts in this article. And so what he talks about is America basically has a choice to basically get back on track. And the world's task is this. Should the world follow the American model, extreme capitalism, no public investment, cruelty as a way of life, the perversion of everyday virtue, then these new social pathologies will follow also. There are new diseases of the body, social, that have emerged from a diet of junk food, junk media, junk science, junk culture, junk economics, people treating one another and their society like junk that America has fed on for far too long. I don't agree with absolutely everything in this article, but I do think he makes a very, very important set of points. And a lot of it has to do with the failing state and whether or not that is turning around as we speak uh, under what's been routed out 
from the top down and is continuing remains to be determined. But we all are individually responsible for ourselves and society at large has basically, in my strong opinion, gone too long and too far into the tell me what to do. I don't know how to think for myself. I don't want responsibility and it's someone else's fault. This is showing up as this gentleman points out in the article. Umar goes on to talk about what I just described, this dis-ease in American culture. And for that to spread globally, in my opinion and in his, is not a good idea. Well, moving on to my favorite topics, I guess, which is the precious metals. This came out of uh, ABC News. Cryptocurrency backed by gold being developed by Perth Mint to entice investors back to precious metals. Australia's biggest gold refiner, the Perth Mint, is developing its own cryptocurrency backed by physical precious metals. I don't read the whole article. I'm sure you could Google it and find it. Find it. This, there are going to be more and more of these as time goes on. Of course, there's those that believe that you cannot marry the, the blockchain, to the distributed ledger with precious metals. Uh, I believe that you can. And in fact, uh, have associated with some people out of Canada that are doing this with silver. Now, always in these situations, it's a matter of trust and how do you know the gold's there and how do you know you can get it, et cetera, et cetera. And that, of course, is a big issue if people really stop to consider what's involved. With the uh, situation that I'm aware of, I am letting it out slowly but surely through not only our membership site, our paid members, but also through the free list, which will be advantageous to those that are very, very interested in a, a backed cryptocurrency. In other words, a gold or silver or whatever. It could be a, a mining project. It could be tea. It could be whatever. But for, specifically for the precious metals, we'll stay on top of this story. If you're not on our free list, I suggest you get on it. Just go to the morganreport.com. Give us a first name and an email address, verify that, and you will be on the free e-letter. At the end of this article, uh, the anticipation of this, of course, the date of the launch of the blockchain affiliated products has not been set, and they're expected within the next 12 to 18 months. So I would say that the one that uh, I'm aware of, that silver only, is probably in the six month time frame, but these things get tricky, especially as the uh, the whole field is really developing, depending upon jurisdictions, SEC rulings, uh, tax implications, reporting requirements at all. So there's a lot to this as this uh, field matures, but uh, I do think that if you're interested, you will probably like if you're inclined to favor a backed currency rather than a fiat and unbacked currency. So again, I'll keep you informed on that. I'll finish off with this uh, article from uh, SRS Rocco, Steve San Angelo. The coming market crash will set off the biggest gold buying panic in history. And I won't read the article. It's definitely worth reading. He talks about the stock market and gold, obviously points out here that the gold bar demand peaked in 2013, yet the demand since then has been roughly a thousand metric tons on an annual basis, which is basically much larger than it was prior to the 2008 financial crisis. So since that time till now, gold demand has gone up and continues to remain rather flat for the last four or five years. However, it's still probably, or it is about double what it was prior to the crash, which means that there are people that are seeking gold as a safe haven and more than prior to the crash. So that's pretty self-evident. Goes on to show you what the ETF demands are, movement in and out of the exchange-traded funds or ETPs, exchange-traded products, because there's more than just the GLD. And then he shows total global gold investment. And that's a rather interesting chart. Again, it's similar to what I just spoke, which means that we see an increase in demand for gold on a global basis. Obviously, it ebbs and flows, but it's been much higher after the crisis of 2007-8. <clears throat> 
using the basis of the data and previous uh, analysis, Steve goes on to state we can estimate what the surge in gold demand will be from a market crash. And what he estimated here was like uh, 4,000 metric tons. And he uses that as a basis for his analysis. And I'm not going to argue with that. No one knows. But he makes a pretty solid case. And I think this last one's pretty interesting, which says, lastly, the critical wild card in the gold market is the retail investor. The retail investor accounts for 98, 99% of the market. I'd argue, I don't think it's that high, but it's certainly high. So when the retail investor gets spooked as fear starts to motivate their investing decisions, we could see insane gold ETF demand. Unfortunately, there may not be enough physical gold to go around. Thus, gold ETFs may not be able to access the metal to increase their inventories in relationship to rising demands. So it makes perfect sense that the real fireworks in the gold market will take place where 99% of these markets makes the decisions, while the 1% to 2% of precious metals investors would most certainly increase the gold and silver holdings during the next market crash. It's the retail investors that will totally overwhelm the gold market. Keep an eye on the gold ETF demand as it will be the crazy wild card. So I will conclude there. I'll be back next week with another weekly perspective.